Today we're going to walk through the surprisingly simple steps of creating the bright and white look in your edits here in Lightroom. So let's get into it. Hello friends, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com where we love to talk about photography and photo editing and the big part of photo editing is finding an editing style that you really like to use and a popular one especially on Instagram is the bright and white photo editing look. Now this effect is created with some really basic adjustments including the white balance, some shadows and whites adjustments and then the HSL. Now you're going to be blown away at how simple this process is so let's hop into Lightroom and get started. Now the first step of the process is adjusting your white balance to actually make white look white. Otherwise you're going to end up with a discolored bright and white effect and then things just won't really look as you were hoping. We don't want bright and yellow, we don't want bright and blue, we want bright and white. So that's where the white balance adjustment comes into play. Now you can manually move these sliders to adjust the white balance, but there's an easier way to get perfect white balance every time in your photo. Clicking on the little eyedropper tool here within the develop module here in the basic panel, clicking on that eyedropper, we're going to go and find an area in our photo that is completely white. Now in this case, we could sample a shirt or we could sample somewhere up in the sky. For this photo, I'm going to sample this white area in the sky and just click once. Now that's going to change the white balance of my photo to make that exact area that I just sampled purely white and that's going to help us going forward. In some cases, depending on where you sample, say I sampled in the shadowy area, it's going to give you a weird sample because this isn't actually purely white in real life because of that shadow it's sort of a discolored white so you need to be careful about where you sample that's why I'm sampling this bright white area in the sky because I know that that is actually white in real life so now that we have our white balance out of the way it's time to go and do some brightening adjustments we can do most of that here within the basic panel and the first thing we'll do is just increase the exposure we want to lift that up to favor a brighter overall look to our image to get that bright and white look started for us now once that base brightness is lifted, we can go and refine some of the shadows and the highlights manually. Now as a general rule of thumb, you can start with the shadows and just drag those up to soften out your image and then do the same thing with your blacks like so. That's going to make all of those dark areas appear a little bit softer because you're brightening them up just slightly while leaving all of the brightest highlight areas untouched. Next we'll go and adjust the highlights and the whites slider. So that's going to affect all this bright area in the sky and on his shirt. So let's play around with that. I'll drag up the highlights first, being careful not to blow out the sky so I lose all that information. I want to just add a little bit in this example since there already is quite a lot of white throughout my image. And then I'll do the same thing with the white slider, drag that up, making sure not to go overboard with it so I blow out my sky, I don't want that. So I'll just be sparing with it and add just a few points of extra white here. So now we have a great starting point for our bright and white look. And now we can go into the last step of using the HSL adjustment. So scrolling down, to the HSL panel here. We'll start with the hue adjustment and if you've watched previous Lightroom tutorials that I've done on my channel you'll know that I don't like to go through all of these sliders individually because you don't always know exactly what sliders you need to work with. That's why I like to use this sample option right here. I'll just click on that and then I can click somewhere on my image to sample a color and then drag up or down to adjust that hue accordingly. This just makes life really easy, especially when you're wanting to get specific with your hue, saturation, and luminance adjustments. So to get things started for this specific look, we want to adjust the hues to something that fits the vibe of your photo. For this image, I kind of want to favor more of an orangey hue, but I need to be careful because notice how his skin starts to go red. I don't want that to happen, so that means I'll have to be a little bit sparing with how I adjust that grass. I'll just bring down the orange a little bit like so, and that is an okay starting point for me. Next I'll go and click on this green in the background and I'll adjust that as needed. I'd like to favor that to a more warm hue as well, and now I'm pretty happy with how this is looking. Now let's go to the saturation adjustment. Clicking on the saturation once again with our sample option, we're going to go and desaturate some of those main colors that we see in our photo. In this case we have the yellows and the greens. So clicking on the yellows here, I'll drag down to desaturate that without making things look totally gray. So that means we'll be once again sparing with how much we do that. And then with the green sample, I'll drag that down a little bit more and pretty much take all the color out of that. So now we have a really nice blended flat look here. 
Next, we'll go to the luminance adjustment, and this is where the bright and white effect really comes together because we're gonna brighten up all those main colors. This time, I'll go and sample his shirt, click on that and drag up, and that's going to brighten up his skin a bit as well as his shirt. And then likewise, I'll do the same with the grass in the background like so. Dragging up that luminance just to brighten those color areas. And then finally, I'll do the same thing for the greens, brightening that up too. So that just adds an overall bright look to the entire photo, and that completes the bright and white effect for this image. So let's go and look at the before and after. Looking at our before and after, you can clearly see how we've lightened up the photo, desaturated some of those colors, and increased the luminance value. So really, it was a very simple one, two, three process between white balance, brightness adjustments, and then HSL. Now that you understand the most basic version of this process, let's go through one more example where we have to use a selective adjustment. So for this second example, we have another image with some more bright hues throughout the photo. And since we have our subject sitting under some shaded parts, it's gonna be a little bit different and we can't just use our global adjustments like we had before because our subject is gonna react differently to our background when we go and create all of these adjustments. Regardless, let's start things simple and go through our three step workflow that we did before, starting with the white balance adjustment. Clicking on our white balance here, I'm going to go and sample one of the colors throughout the photo. Although her dress is white, since it is discolored from this red, that she's sitting under notice how it kind of has a purple hue to it if I click on that it's gonna give me a weird sample so I need to find something a little bit more accurate such as the white on the bridge in the background now that the white balance is set let's go and increase the overall exposure just like so dragging up that exposure slider and that looks like a good starting point to me the background is a little bit brighter our subject is a little bit brighter and it's a nice balance between the two areas now let's go and lift the shadows and the blacks lifting up those shadows we can now see a little bit more details in the dark areas and then the same thing will happen with the blacks now since we already have such a bright background we're going to be sparing with how we do these highlight adjustments if i increase it to much is going to start to get blown out like it did in our previous example so I'll just be sparing with that and add a very slight adjustment to my highlights and a slight adjustment to the whites as well now if your photo looks a little bit washed out such as mine does right now you can increase the contrast slider like so and it's going to bring back a little bit of life to your image really quickly with one slider now that our exposure adjustments are done let's go to the fun part which is the hsl adjustments scrolling down we're going to start with our hue adjustment once again and just like before, clicking on our sample option, we're gonna go and click on some different colors throughout the photo. Since blue is a really dominant color, I'll click there, try to adjust the hue to something a little bit more favorable. In this case, I want more of a teal color like this. And that's pretty much the only hue I want to adjust for this photo. So let's go to the saturation option. Once again, using the sample option, I'm gonna click on the same blue area and desaturate that. And notice how a lot of my photo becomes desaturated, and that's because blue is such a dominant color throughout this image. I don't want to go so crazy that it becomes black and white, but I want to pretty much get rid of most of that blue so I can really dial in that bright and white look that I'm going for. Now that that is in place, let's go to the luminance adjustment. Once again, with our sample option, I'm gonna click somewhere on her dress here and try to brighten up her dress like that. And with a bit of adjustments to our luminance values, we can make a few other areas look a little bit more bright and white to fit the look that we're going for. Now the problem that we're dealing with now is that our subject still looks quite dark in relation to the background. And this is because, like I said before, she's sitting in the shadowy area while the background is super sunny. So we need to use a selective adjustment to balance everything out. The best tool for the job in this case is the selective adjustment brush. So clicking on that brush right up here, we're going to make Make sure that auto mask is checked off down here. Now, if you're new to auto mask, I highly suggest checking out my previous tutorial where we dive deep into this tool and how it's useful in Lightroom. You can find that via the link in the description below. If you don't feel like watching that video, then just make sure auto mask is checked off and Lightroom will still do all the magic for you. With all of that set up, I'm just going to paint over my model to create a mask for my selective adjustment. Now, obviously I can't see where everything is being painted, so I can press O on my keyboard to reveal my mask indicated by the red. And this just makes life a lot easier to create selective adjustments because now you can know exactly what is being affected on your photo. Pressing O to hide that mask, I'm going to brighten up my subject by increasing the exposure. But the problem now is that her skin looks a little bit washed out and lifeless. So let's add some 
warmth back into it with our color temperature slider, dragging that up to favor a more yellow warm hue. That's gonna really make her skin tones feel a little bit more natural and nice. And to finish everything off, let's add a little bit of contrast to make her pop from the rest of the photo. And now with that, we have successfully created our bright and white effect. So let's look at the before and after. Looking at her before, we had a lot of blue tones in our image, which is why most of what we did with the HSL adjustments affected the blue color range because it was so dominant throughout our photo. By adjusting the saturation and luminance of those blue values, it pretty much created the bright and white effect for us really quickly since there wasn't many other competing colors. After we did those general adjustments, we went through and added some spot adjustments to the model so that she was brightened up a little bit and matched the brightness of the background to complete this bright and white look. Once we finished working with the background, we did a selective adjustment over our model using auto mask and then changed up the color temperature for her skin tones, brightened up the overall exposure and added some contrast to make her pop from the image. And then with all of that together, we have a really nice final result for the edit. All right, guys, so if you enjoyed learning how to make this bright and white effect here in Lightroom, then make sure to hit that like button down below as it really makes a difference to help more people see this video and learn this effect for themselves. Now, if you're new to this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with more Lightroom and photo editing tutorials posted every week to help you improve in Lightroom and Photoshop. Again, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com, and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.